Um, okay, I must admit that I haven't really prepared my speech because I was actually going to talk about a different topic. Um, this is because of something that happened a few days ago and maybe I should tell you what happened a few days ago so you would understand the situation. So um, when, this, um, when this competition started, I decided to start my speech early. And I had my computer on, um, I had my Spotify playlist playing, and after about like two, more like three hours of procrastination, I finally, um, I was typing my heart out with this piece about work problems and my solu solutions to it. And that's when someone came up to me. It was an adult actually, and she said, are you doing this for your TEDx? I said, yeah, why, is, that, is there a problem? And she said, well, this is, a boring topic. I thought you were supposed to be chosen because you are unique. And, and she made a good point. I, I started to be really nervous and I uh, went to a trusted source which is Google and uh, I quickly typed um, best TEDx topics. And I spent the last month perfecting that topic until a few days ago when I realized that if world problem is considered to be boring, it's a proof that it's been talked about and written about and broadcasted about so many times that it's become a part of our lives right now. Then why aren't there enough amount of individuals' actions taken in correspondence to that amount of activism? It's like no matter how many times people tell you to stop using plastic, you would still use plastic. And why is that the case? I've found a, a, so an answer to it because of a privilege that I have, which is being a teenager. A teenager is basically a mashup of an adult and a child combined together with just a bit of emotional instability. But that's beside the point. Uh, I am able to understand what a child views the world and what's, what an adult views the world. And here's a simple breakdown for you. <coughs> a child views the world through a simplistic mindset and an adult views the world through a, an adultized perspective. That's not a word, but I'm introducing it to you today as the word of the day because it's the villain of today's fairy tale. Adultized basically means it's an adjective to describe something that has negatively impacted someone's life experience because uh, of their process of turning into an adult. And it's because of this that it's the barrier that's stopping us from taking actions that actually matters in the world. So um, I Something happened last summer. I was uh, actually at the UN, and I was, um, I was a youth ambassador trying to promote uh, youth involvement in the global goals. Before the trip, I had a little research session about the UN, and I realized that a lot of what they're talking about is um, the economic side of things rather than the humanitarian side of things. And I realized that as a society, we made economy the king. Humanitarian work is simply not as important. And um, this is because as adults, we have learned that money is important and it's essential. And we're unwilling to give out money for other donations. For example, you would probably be more willing to invest um, a lot of money into a, a business rather than giving those money to a donation charity. This is a problem. Because I realized that, how sad is it that as a society, we're turning into a more materialistic society rather than a spiritual society. And we understand that there are people suffering in horrid conditions, yet we're choosing to ignore it because we would rather keep the money to ourselves. Children, however, don't care about money. And you might think that that is careless and senseless and childish, but that's really not the case if you really understand. Because adults are different from Adults see money before taking actions, and children see taking actions before the money. Another, and um, after that researching session, I went on the trip, and this is a picture of me at the UN. And um, it, was, it was a really interesting trip, and uh, uh, we, went, we had the chance to go to the UN headquarters, and we went through the security, we went through the hall, and um, we actually were able to go into one of the meetings and um, more like creeping into, which is totally not creepy at all, but still. And I realized that these people in the room right there, they have this really serious face, they scrunch up face with their like, black suit and they were like under a lot of tension. And I can't help but wonder 
why are big leaders spending so much time and so much effort into correcting pieces of words on a piece of paper instead of doing actual actions? The UN approach to solving world problems is, is through producing things that are called resolution. Resolution is basically what the UN asks the countries to do in order to solve world problems. And I'm sorry, but it's really not that effective. I'll give you an example. The Millennium, the Millennium Development Goals took two years to be negotiated. Then in the end, no country achieved that goal. The Global Goals, which is the exact thing that I'm promoting because I do believe in it, it's just it's too inefficient because it took three years to be negotiated and by the 2018 report says that no country is on the right track to meeting its 2030 goals. Adults, uh, the thing is, adults are overcomplicating things. They are spending too much time looking at this resolution while children have a more simplified way to look at things. They don't care about a radical plan of actions, they do actions. For example, um, there, are there are already children at the age of 10, um, at the age of 10 just doing th simple things like uh, building a lemonade stand to fundraise and it's that simple. As individuals you can learn that from them and just do simple actions. Like for example, just use an inox straw instead of a plastic one. It's really easy. The, chi wh the reason why children are more efficient is because um, here's, here's a simple children math equation for you. 2 plus 3 equals 5. The amount of years it took to negotiate the resolutions it was 5 years. That's a long time for a child. It's the amount of time it takes from a child of 10 to become a teen of 15. As adults, you might not think that it's a long time because of your adultized perspective, but it is a long time and we need to do something about it. You need to be, will, be more willing to try. Because adults have this thing, I'm gonna call it accumulative life experiences that you're all probably proud of. I mean, I'm already proud of my first year of high school and I want to bracket it to, my, um, to the middle school kids. But uh, this accumulative life experiences that you look and you, are you proud of, and it's the thing that you use to teach your kids, it's, a, it's the values you think of when you do your work, it's not actually that beneficial after all. Children, on the other hand, they don't have this accumulated life experiences, which means they are more willing to try. When new, new issues raise up, for example, mental health, a lot of you guys as adults will probably not care about it as much because you won't see the potential in caring about it but children are more perceptive and they're willing to do something about the new problem that arises. Um, for example, if I tell you to be vegan or be vegetarian, exactly, you would feel really disgusted and um, you would not be willing to try. But if you ask a, ch a child, they will probably be willing to try for one day. And for one day without eating meat, you will save 851 liters of water, and that's already enough for 425 uh, thirsty people. That's already solving two world problems per day. The bottom line is we need to change as a society because, not as a society, but as individuals, because each one of you matters in the whole process of making the world a better place. We have moved on from the era of just talking and pondering and all of these warnings because I purposely did not talk about a specific world problem in my speech today. I did not want to educate you furthermore because you know that we are facing something. You know that we need to do something. It's just that you're not doing it. So I'm, not, I'm gonna leave the speech today not telling you to think about what I said or remember what I said because you'll probably not do it. I will end the speech today by just leaving you with one word, which is action, because it is what you need to do rather than just talking and posting on social media without doing anything. Thank you.